a chef, he got out of the catering industry, he put a shower in my basement on Thistle Street, which was an absolute stroke of genius. Anyway, back to the kilt. That's woven in Scotland by Loch Carron. It's a proper 16 ounce heavyweight gold worsted. Again, Weber, McDonald's of the Isles. Very nice. I'm worn like that. Steve is worn it formally, he wears it casually. My message to people is if you own a kilt, stick it on with some boots, guys, chunky socks, a nice bit of net. So yeah, he works as master roaster with um, big pigs and gets them all at parties, nice and tasty for you. This is a patchwork tweed, blew my mind, it's really quite unusual. It's woven in turf by Glenn Lionville. You'll notice Ryan's got some funky pockets on. They're detachable and interchangeable. So you've got like more of a pocket system. Let's take Paul next. I think Ryan's going to have a wee relax. This tweed he got married in oh, about three years ago. It's woven in mull. It's an organic ethical tweed. So the sheep from mull make the wool, all the dyes are natural. It's looking great. These guys never really catwalked before. Real guys doing it in real kilts. A wee round of applause for Paul there. That's got a lovely swing, so he does. Come on, catwalk, baby. So he's wearing a, an estate tweed. It's not tartan, it's woven in Selkirk. It's a generic tweed. I don't know if anyone saw the BBC2 program about the history of tartan. Really, to be honest, it's kind of made up. But men have worn kilts for hundreds of thousand years ago, back to the Egyptians wore skirts that were kind of pleated. So you know, men in an unbifurcated garment, it's actually very healthy. Now that's his wedding outfit, whereas this is neck is lovely bright. Uh, sorry, I missed Kirsty earlier. Which, anyway, right. Vinny's outfit, you've got a beautiful Campbell of Argyle, Weber colours, again woven by Loch Carron. Those boots were my own design, a hundred pairs made, sold out I'm afraid. The waistcoat, show off the waistcoat a bit for me Vinny. Now that's a waistcoat cutting across, old style. My belief, although I'm 21st century kilts, if he had a wee time machine and went back to the 1920s or 1890s, he could easily stand around with a guy in a kilt from the old age. Highland dress, kilt wear, should be timeless. And without the shiny buttons and all that garb, it's a lot easier to wear in this day and age. These are lovely real foreign buttons. You two all look lovely together. Have a seat, Vinny. That actually was an off cut from a man's kilt. So you know, it's all about recycling. Sorry, Lindsay's picked me off. What, what's your name again? Ingrida, well, have Ingrida out as well. And have a wee dance. Okay, let's talk about Ingrida's um, kilt. This is the Weathered Hunting Stuart. Again, woven by Loch Cannon, but I like your weight wool. It's nine ounce wool. And let's tell you a wee story about Weathered Hunting Stuart. Although anyone from Stuart clan can wear it, it was declared a generic public tartan by Lord Lyon, the Queen's representative of tartans. So really anyone from Hong Kong to Alaska can wear Weber Hunting Stuart. This is about Harris Tweed having a bit of fun. I also do Harris Tweed pinstripe. That guy never made it today, unfortunately. So this is Pink Harris Tweed. I work with the Carla Wayne Mill in Isla Lewis and they can basically weave anything to order. You can even take a tart and have it squashed down to like a hound's tooth. A lot of fun with Harris Tweed at the moment. Who's got next? This is lovely Ryan, um, not a professional model, but he's done a look good. We round of applause for the non-professional, okay? So Ryan's wearing the first tartan to be registered and woven as an actual tweed. Again woven by Carlaway. This is the Carlanish tartan based on the Carlanish stones. And it's all about fertility. It's, it's designed as a wedding tartan, but it was also based on the Balmoral tartan, the Queen's own tartan. It's the first time the Queen has ever given permission for Balmoral Tartan to be adapted. So that's quite an exciting tartan. The Malcolm the Weaver is a massive big guy. This is called Muted Colours. The reds are a wee bit more subtle, the blues are a bit more khaki. Woven by House of Edgars and Perth. Um, ladies, I do most ladies' kilts, but all my kilts are pretty much made to measure. Length is a choice. I don't insist on all these kilts, but again, we do a wee ladies' range made mock cuts. That's like an off cut from a very tall guy. You see what we made from Vinny's kill. Tim a rugby. Again, Harris Tweed. This is the house tooth idea I was talking about. Now that's more like an original tartan that say Braveheart would have worn back in 12, 13, 14. I'm not so good at my history. But much more simple check, much more simple colouring. 
not so much block square, which really became more relevant in the Victorian times after the Jacobite Rebellion, after the ban, art really got going. Thank you very much. Now, last funky look. This is it, guys. This is Neil. He's really going to a party. Again, this is a mistake tweet, not a tartan. Now, as he walks, notice the rectangle is downwards, as opposed to across. Tartan's a square, and he's symmetrical. These are window pane checks. That's woven in Selkirk by Anthony Haynes. The waistcoat's a generic Hebridean tartan by House of Edgar. Look at those moves. See, it just swings better in a kilt. If we did that in trousers, it wouldn't be as good. So, right, my thing about window pane checks is they have to go the right way. Gentlemen, ladies, if you are shopping for a kilt, and it's a tweed kilt, make sure the check goes the right way. And real people, all together, walking that walk. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to the back of house team and the NSA for having us here. Thank you gentlemen, brilliant, unfortunately that way.